Okay, let me start here. So when we talk about the linear motion and acceleration is constant, and we can um, going to solve uh, five parameters, and if we know three of them, so the five parameters will be the displacement, um, x or y, and time, or uh, velocity. Velocity we have initial velocity and the final velocity, and then we have acceleration. So let me see. And uh, when we remove one parameter, we can use the reservoir to write down an equation. So for example, if we don't have displacement, no displacement, then we have an equation that's um, the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time. This is an equation uh, defined by the definition of the acceleration. And the second one, if there's no time, we don't care about the time, then we have the equation uh, not including time. That will be the velocity square equals uh, velocity, initial velocity square plus two times A times displacement. Third one, if there's no final velocity, so we can find the displacement equals the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half A T square. This is uh, uh, equation without final velocity. And the number four, if we don't about acceleration, then we can find the equation of displacement equal to the average multiplied by the duration. The average velocity could be calculated in one half initial velocity plus final velocity and times the duration. Okay, so that means if we know three parameter, we can solve the rest of two. And if we have two, uh, two direction, we have X and Y, for example, we have X and Y, then the parameter in each component is independent. So we have the velocity in the X, we have acceleration in the X and the displacement in the X, they are all independent of the velocity in the y, acceleration in the y, and the displacement in the y. The only thing they share is a time. So time is the same. So this is how we solve the um, uh, linear motion for each component. Okay, let me move to the uh, homework problem. So there is a rocket. The rocket um, start from zero velocity and with an acceleration of 2.25 meter per second cube. And there's no air resistance. Okay. And it says when it has reached a height of 525 meter, the engine fail. If the engines fail, there's only a gravity of the rocket. Okay, so let me uh, clarify this question. It says um, there is a rocket and the rocket has two parts of the motion. The first part, the acceleration is upward and the value is 2.25 meter per second cube, uh, a second square. And the second part, after the engine fails, the acceleration goes to the negative 9.8 meter per second square. That's gravity. Okay. So we are looking for number one, what's the maximum height this rocket will reach above the launch pad? Okay. If I draw a diagram about this uh, motion, so it starts from the ground. Start from the ground and it goes very quick with acceleration 2.25 and the reach height um, to 525 meter. 
by 25 meter. Then the engine fail. It just deacceleration, then reach the highest point, and then drop down. And at the highest point, we know at the highest point the velocity is zero. This is the hidden condition. And what else do we know? Uh, we know the acceleration, 9.8. We know the final velocity. To solve the displacement, the maximum height, we need to know one more parameter. So we can know either the time or either the initial velocity. If we know either of this, then we can solve the maximum height. So which one is the best parameter that we can solve? Um, we can solve this one, the initial velocity. Because the initial velocity of the second motion is the final velocity of the first motion. First motion, the equivalent. So from the, uh, the first motion, we know uh, the initial velocity is zero. The acceleration is 2.25 meter per second square. And we know the displacement, let me use y is 525 meter. Okay. So we know three parameters, then we can solve uh, the final velocity. The final velocity, we're going to use the equation without time. So square, v0 square plus 2ay. Okay, so in this equation, we can solve the final velocity. And check the solution. The final velocity, mm, in this case, is 48.6 meter per second. So this is a final velocity for the first motion. Then this final velocity is the initial velocity of second motion. Second one. The second one, we know the initial velocity is 48.6 meter per second, and we know acceleration, and we know the final velocity is zero. Okay, so we use the same equation to solve the displacement. We have v square, this is zero, time equals initial velocity plus 2ay. Then we can solve the y. Y here, let's see how much is Y. So Y, after we solve it, we get one twenty-one meter. Okay, that means the displacement from here to here, from the uh, the position when the engine fail to the highest point is one twenty-one meter. So the maximum height we have to add this to height. So the final total is equal to 121 meter plus 225 meter. So we have six, four, six. Okay, if you have any question, you can stop me and I can explain more details. This is part A, part B. How much time will collapse after the engine fail before the rocket come crashing down to the launch pad? So we are looking for the time. Part B, we are looking for time. So how many parameters do we know? The displacement from here to here, the displacement is 525. Okay. So we have displacement equal to minus 525. The minus means um, the displacement goes down, right? So I have a minus sign here. This is very important. And let me see what else do we know. We know the acceleration, g, and we know the initial velocity of this motion is forty-eight. Okay. So to solve time, we can use the equation without final velocity, that will be y 
equal to initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half a t squared. Okay, so here the this is the equation about the t squared. So this is a parabolic equation, and we can use the um, equation formula, the formula of the root for the parabolic equation. Then we can solve the t. The time will be let's see what's the time. Mm, the time will be 16.4 seconds. Does it take 16.4 seconds for the rocket and to crash to the pad after the engine fails? Okay, this is part B. And how fast will it be moving just before it crash? Okay, we are looking for the final velocity. The final velocity, we are using this equation, initial velocity plus AT, right? And the initial velocity we know uh, is 48.6 meter per second. A is negative 9.8 meter per second cube square times the T, T is 16.4. Okay, so eventually we get the final velocity is negative 112 meter per second. Negative means the velocity goes down. So that makes sense. If you get the positive number, you have to re think about that where you make the mistake. The last part, sketch the AT, VT, and the YT graphs. And to sketch the graphs, the AT is um, very easy because we only have two constants acceleration. So if this is a T, this is A, and we have T, this is V, and we have Y, this is T. Okay, so let's sketch it. So for the acceleration, the first part is 2.25 positive. So this is 2.5. 25, and then it goes to negative 9.8. 9.8, negative. So this is acceleration. And second one is velocity. So the velocity actually is linear relation of the time. So if this is a linear relation with time, we just need to draw a line for each part. So the first part, the uh, acceleration is positive. So we have the positive slope. So it goes to here. Okay, this is X, um, speed. So the final speed for the first acceleration part is 48.6 meter per second. We have got this value here. And after the crash, um, the acceleration goes down, goes to negative, so we have negative acceleration. Third one, the displacement. The displacement, we have displacement as a function of t is a parabolic equation, right? parabolic equation. And for the first part, the initial velocity is zero, so we don't have this part we have only the one half a t square, and the a is positive. So we have the positive curvature. So the curve looks like this. Okay. After the crash, we have another curve, v zero t plus one half a t square. And now, the velocity is not zero and the acceleration is negative. So we have a negative curvature. So it looks like this. Also another parabolic curve, but the curvature is negative. Okay. So this is uh, um, the graphs for the three parameters at function of time. You have any I have, I have a question for part B. Part B, okay. 
What's that? So when I did the problem, I read it as like trying to find how much time between the engine failure to the top mm -hmm. of the like until it started falling down. So like how Not do we know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we know in that like sentence that we're supposed to find the other half? Oh, because um they don't the first half and the second half has no dis, uh, the same displacement. So we have to separate this uh, calculation. So let me use your um, your condition to find that. So the first part is goes up, second part goes down. So the first one, we know the initial velocity, we know acceleration, and we know the final velocity. So we can solve the, the time. So I'm going to use this equation as that uh, V equal to V zero plus VT. So we can solve the, the time for the first part. The second part, and uh, let's see, we need to know the displacement. The displacement for the second part uh, is here. This is the displacement for the second part. So we have Y and initial velocity is zero. So we have this and we have G. And to solve the time, we have y equal to one half kt squared. So we can solve the second time for the second half. So the total time will be t1 plus t2. So did I answer your question? So for that, we had to find like all of the time after yeah. failure. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one. There's a car and a truck start with some distance uh, in between, and the truck has acceleration, the car has acceleration, the car has acceleration. Okay. And when the car overtakes the truck, um, the truck already moves 60 meter. How much time does it take the car to overtake the truck? So the time, because they share the same time. So to calculate the time for the car, we can calculate the time for the truck. Okay. So the time for the car is equal to the time for the truck. And to get the time of the truck, let's figure out how many parameters do we know. The truck, we know the initial velocity because the Start from rest. So initial velocity for the truck is zero. This is the truck. And acceleration 2.10. And displacement 60 meter. So to get the time, we have x equal to v0 time and one half at square. Because v0 zero, zero, so this just gone, so we have one half at square. The time to be solved that will be seven point fifty six seconds. This is a time. Okay, so then, uh, how far was the car behind the truck initially? To find the initial position for the car, let's figure out. The displacement for the car. So for the car, what's the displacement? To get the displacement, we need to know three parameters for the car. The time, we already know. Initial velocity is zero and acceleration is 3.40. Okay, so the x equal to the same equation, one half at squared. Okay, so we have displacement for the car. The displacement for the car, let me see, what's that? Mm, let's do the calculation. And that will be the 97.16 meter. Okay, when we have the displacement of the car, and uh, let's think about that. The car moved to 97.16 meter to catch the, the truck. And the truck move 60 meter to reach the car, to 
to be cached. So then there is a difference. The difference is the initial distance between the car and the truck. So the delta x equal to 97.16 minus 16 meter. So we have 37 meter. So this is the initial distance between car and the truck. Next question, what's the speed of each when they are abreast? So what's the speed of each? Let's figure out the speed of the car. The speed of a car, we want to know the final velocity. So we have initial velocity, we have time, and we have acceleration. So the final velocity, we're going to use this equation. That is initial velocity plus acceleration times t. The initial velocity is zero, so we only use a t to calculate the final velocity. For the car, the velocity is, and let me see, velocity is acceleration 3.4 times and 7.56 seconds. So we have and 25.7 meter. And for the truck, we use the same equation. The truck has an initial velocity of zero. So acceleration is 2.10 times 7.56 seconds. So we have uh, we have the final velocity is 15.9. Okay, this is the final velocity for both of the car and the truck. The last part on a single graph, sketch the position of each vehicle as a function of time. Okay, so we're looking for a graph x of t. So for the truck, we know the x of the truck and the, <clears throat> and the time has the relation equal to v0 t plus one half a t squared. And the initial velocity is zero. So we only have one half a t squared. Then this is a parabolic curve. The parabolic curve will be and starting from the zero point, mm -hmm. then goes up. Mm -hmm. And the time here, and let me see, time is 7.656 second. And the displacement is 60. Is it for the, for the truck? And for the car, car the X displacement equals also the zero initial velocity plus one half at squared. So it's also another parabolic curve, but the initial position of the car has some distance behind, has a 37 meter behind. So we are going to move the initial position of the car, negative 37. Okay, this is, uh, initial position for the car, then with the similar curve to reach the truck. Okay, finally, they have the same displacement, they have the same position, but um, the car has a larger acceleration. Okay, do you have any question? So let me move on. Next one is uh, easy cake. So we have um, a moving sidewalk with a constant velocity of 1 point, 1 1.0 meter per second. And it says uh, the sidewalk 
has a 35 meter long, and there is a woman step on the sidewalk with a constant velocity 1.5 meter per second. And we're looking for the time to pass the moving sidewalk when the direction are parallel and enter parallel. The first one, when they are parallel. So when the parallel, the speed of the sidewalk is one meter per second, and the woman has a parallel speed, it's one point, 1.5 meter per second. So the total velocity relative to the earth will be the sum of the two speed. So we have 2.5 meter per second. This is speed relative to the earth or the ground. And the time will be equal to the displacement over the velocity. So we have 35 meter over 2.5 meter per second. That is how much is it? 14 seconds. For the second one, when they are enter parallel, uh, we have speed of the woman 1.5 and the sidewalk is one meter per second. So the total velocity relative to the ground is 0.5 meter per second, okay. the subtraction. Then the time, the duration will be the, the same displacement over the new total velocity. Mm -hmm. So we have 35 meter over 0.5 meter per second. So that's a 70 seconds. Okay, do you have any question? Okay, if there's no other question, let me uh, move, move on. And this problem actually is a similar problem as this one. So I want to skip this. And next one is the addition of vector. So there is a river, the river has a speed of two meters per second, moving to the south, the speed of the water, of the river, it's equal to two meters per second. And there is a boat, the boat across the river to the east with a velocity 2.4.2. Uh, this is the speed of the boat. And it says the river is 500 meter wide. And what's the velocity, both for the magnitude and direction relative to the Earth? Okay. So we are going to use the parallelogram row. The parallelogram row means we can draw a parallelogram by these two sides and connect the diagonal. When we connect the diagonal, we have the total velocity equal to the square root of um, each side is square, vr square plus vb square. So we have total velocity equal to 2 square plus 4.2 square. So we will have uh, the result is 4.7 meter per second. Okay, so this is the first part. Second part, and um, how much time is required to cross a river? We have two methods to solve this problem. First one, we use the total displacement, total displacement over the total speed. It's the first method, number one. Um, but this requires a lot of calculation. But if we think about another one is because the time is shared by each direction. In the x direction and in the y direction, they share the same time. So 
So we only need to use the displacement in the X component over the velocity in the X component, right? So in the X component, we have displacement is the river. Okay? Displacement is 500 in the east. This is X, 500 meter wide. And the speed in the X direction is 4.2, 4.2 meter per second. So we use this over 4.2 meter per second. So eventually we get the time is 120 second. If you use the first method, you need to figure out the total displacement. So total displacement, this is not very easy to get. So first one, we have to get the total displacement in the X and total displacement in the Y, then we use the formula to get the diagonal, the length of diagonal. So the total displacement will be equal to square root x squared plus y squared. Okay. And the y, we don't know why, but this is a question for the part three, part c. So y actually equal to the time, the same time uh, times the velocity in the y direction. So we are going to solve the displacement for the y. So I don't recommend to use this method. This is not recommended. So um, let's see. For the part B, we know the time from the X component is 120 second. So for the part C, to get how far south of the boat and uh, will reach the opposite bank. We use the 120 second multiplied by the speed of the river is 240 meter. Okay, do you have any question? Okay, so if there's no other question, let me move to the quiz and stop the sharing.